Welcome. Today we're going to be talking about one of the most important strategies in learning how to do physics problems. And so this is something that will pop up throughout the year at different times. I'm going to start talking about this in the context of position and displacement. So I want to start with displacement vectors. Let's think of this question to get started. What is the answer to this vector addition? So looking at if you add three units plus four units and these two vectors are in a line, what do you expect the answer is going to be? It's going to be seven and that would be correct. How about this? How about a follow up question? And what would be the answer to this question? If we have three units and we add another four units, but they are not in a number line, is this going to be seven units? And the answer is no. Hopefully you get the idea that the answer is not going to be 7 units. In fact, it's going to be something less than 7 units. And so how do we go about solving a question like this, where you have two vectors and they are not at right angles to each other, but we want to come up with this dotted line, this resultant right here. How would we go about doing that? Well, we would go about doing that using the head to tail method of two dimensional vector addition. So that's what I'm going to talk you through. It's incredibly important for physics and maybe some other math classes as well. So let's go ahead and get to it. Okay, and so what I want to point out is a lot of times in a problem, you may have a diagram like this where you start something out, especially on forces. You can have forces that will have a free body diagram and then forces going off in multiple directions. And the question is, how do we deal with this? How do we go about solving for the resultant vector, the overall vectors that we're going to have and so again, in brief summary here, we're going to be solving using the head to tail method. So you're going to draw the head of one vector to the tail of another vector. This will be your initial position. This will be your final position, you could say. And then we're going to be looking for the resultant here. Actually, if you did this to scale perfectly with the lengths and the angles being drawn perfectly, you could just draw it. That's called the graphical vector addition method. That's not very practical though, because we don't have time to take out protractors and do this every time to scale. What we do need to do is come up with a mathematical solution to this. So let's go ahead and take a look at how to do this. Okay, and our first strategy is we're gonna break the vectors down into components first. So these two vectors, each of them, will become the hypotenuse of a right triangle, and then we can break those down into our components. And so let me show you what I'm talking about. So this vector right here becomes this hypotenuse of a right triangle. So you just draw the right triangle off to the side. You can label this as vector 1x or just v1x vector 1y or v1y over here. And so we go ahead and throw in our numbers at this point in the year. Hopefully you've had some simple trig and you can go ahead and solve along with this and get your answer here. So I've just solved for this component, this part of the vector in the X axis. I'm going to do something similar for the Y axis next. And I show my work here and you end up with the solution for this vector one Y over here. Then we're going to do the same thing with the second vector. So let's go ahead and draw the second vector as the hypotenuse to a right triangle like I've done here. I'm throwing in some numbers so we can work with this and I'm going to do some simple trig to be able to solve for my vector 2y, this component over here using sine, and I'm going to do some similar things and solve for the vector 2x over here. So that's 9.46 centimeters over here. We continue with that. And just to summarize again what I've done, I've taken each vector and made it into the hypotenuse of a right triangle. I did that with the second one as well. And I've solved for my components, that would be the parts in the x-axis and the y-axis, so that we can eventually add those together. So let's see how that works. Our second strategy is give the vectors positive and negative signs based on the directions and add them together and find the sum of the vectors in each axis. All right, so let's see how this works. And so what I would like to do is just solve for the sum of the vectors in the x, first of all, and we'll get to the y in a moment. But the very first thing I want to point out is something that you may already notice. The question is, what's going on here? Let's think about it. I've drawn in the origin here and here as separate drawings because of space considerations. But what I do want to say is note that this is going towards the left. And I'm going to assume to the left is negative, to the right is positive over here. So if this vector is heading to the left, then that would mean we would need to make this negative. And in fact, if you don't make it negative, you're going to get the problem wrong. We find the difference here and we end up with 4.96 centimeters that's heading to the right. 
And we're going to do similar things for the y-axis here. If we add up the vectors in the y-axis, we end up with one of them being positive. That's our first vector in the y. And the second vector in the y is going to be negative. Really important that you notice which vectors are negative. And that's what I'm talking about up here. Give the vectors positive and negative signs based on the directions and add them together and find the sum of the vectors in each axis. If you practice this throughout the year, it's going to become easy. You'll see this throughout the year as you take physics. And you may see this in other classes as well. All right, let's continue. Okay, and so what I want to do next is I want to work with the sum of the vectors in the x and the sum of the vectors in the y, and I'm going to make them the legs of a new right triangle and solve for the hypotenuse. So to do this, I've got an animation here. It's going to be a little bit messy, and then it'll get more clear. I'll show you what I mean. So here's the messy part. I'm going to go ahead and add in the sum of the vectors in the x right here, the sum of the vectors in the y right here. So we have our endpoint over here. And then I'm going to erase the background vectors so you can more clearly see what I'm talking about. We have solved for this. We have solved for this. So we know our final point is going to be over here. And then we can use the Pythagorean theorem and solve here. Let me show you one more time the animation that I made for this. So we started with these two vectors. And we solve for the sum of the vectors in the x and the y. So let me go ahead and show that as an overlay. The sum of the vectors in the x and the y as based on those two previous vectors. Now I'm going to get rid of the two previous vectors. So you can see that we're just left with the sum of the vectors in the x. The sum of the vectors in the y. And now based on this we can just use the Pythagorean theorem to solve for the resultant right here. So that's what I've done and I've shown the work over here. One of the last things I should mention is that sometimes a problem will ask you to solve for an angle. And so this is the angle that I'm talking about here with some reference line. And so you could say like how much above the horizontal or how much north of east is the angle with reference to the east or something along those lines. And so the question is, well, how would I go about solving for this? What you're going to do is use an inverse or an arc tangent. Usually is tangent is what you have, but you could actually do this with any of the trig functions. So you know what the opposite leg is, you know what the adjacent leg is. So what you do is you say, well, I am interested in this theta right here. I'm not interested in the tangent of the theta. I am interested in the theta. So to get the theta by itself, you take the arc tangent of both sides, like the inverse tangent, similar to the inverse tangent of both sides. That will cancel out the tangent function on the left, and we're left with this arc tangent over here. And then we just go ahead, plug in our values, and we end up with our correct answer. So you can solve for the angle that way. Usually you're going to be using that arc tangent function, but like I said, you can do this with the inverse sine, inverse cosine, and so on. So I hope this has been helpful. This will pop up at various times throughout the year. You will need to know how to do vector addition using the head-to-tail vector method, and that's what this is. So. If you have liked this, please continue to watch. I've got other videos in series that will help you to understand concepts in physics. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.